Okay, hopefully the microphone is working. Uh, this segment, this episode, we're going to talk about uh, UTVs for the homestead. Um, UTVs are one of those things. A lot of people, you know, buy them for fun. You know, they're 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 not the cheapest thing around, uh, but they are quite handy. Um, I tend to use mine almost as much, if not more, than my tractor. It's uh, we've got a lot of land, so it's kind of hard to move around. You know, carry firewood, chainsaws, tools, air compressor, welders, whatever, whatever you have. I mean, it's if you got to get from one end of the property to the other. I mean, this is the best thing. You know, not particularly this particular brand, but just this machine in itself. It's a little Jeep. Uh, a lot of people are like, oh, for the price, just go buy a Jeep Wrangler. Uh, no, <laughs> it's. I thought about it, but uh, literally, these things are so light. And they float, oh, I mean, there's some swampy wet terrain here that a Jeep would just bury itself. This thing just goes right over it. I've got a little trailer that this thing has, and it's got flotation tires. It just floats over full of firewood. I mean, I've got tractors that get stuck, trucks that get stuck. A Jeep would just get stuck out there. I mean, it, it's, and then the trails, this thing's narrow. It fits through, you know, ATV trails in the woods. You don't have to make trails as big. Uh, it's just such a handy little thing. This particular one will fit in the back of a full-size pickup truck. Um, particular one that we got is a uh, Polaris Ranger, the 500. It's literally the cheapest one that they made when I, I bought I bought it new. I got so sick of, uh, you know, social media, Craigslist, Facebook, whatever the marketplace is, trying to buy one used. And, you know, people wouldn't hold it. You know, you'd go there and be like, oh, we just sold it. Sorry. You know, or you'd make a deal and then somebody would just show up and offer you, offer them more. And so I just gave up. I ended up getting, uh, saved my money. Took a few years, uh, had cash, waited. Polaris sent out some special, like a couple years ago, it was like a thousand dollar Polaris, Polaris dollars. I took that, my cash, it was still less than what the new one cost, about a thousand dollars less. Went to a bunch of dealers and said, what can you do? Every dealer said, that's the price. Uh, I ended up going to a big dealer that, I mean, humongous dealer, huge dealer. And when I was there, they had a bell. And they had motorcycles, UTVs, four wheels, everything. And I kept hearing this bell and I asked one of the salesmen, I go, what's that bell? Oh, that's every time we sell, we sell a vehicle. So I mentioned what I had, what I wanted. And they just said, well, let's go talk to our salesman. Or the, they actually got the owner over there. And I talked to him, told him, you know, I don't need anything special. So he gave me a great price on this. Uh, nothing but, you know, zero problems on this thing so far. Um, the one thing though, when I bought it, and I didn't realize the expense, I bought it without a roof, without the windshields, just stripped down, bare bones, nothing on it. Just the little Jeep itself, you know. Uh, since I've owned it, uh, had it for a couple years now. It was one of those, I'm like, I'm gonna save up and buy, you know, I actually have everything for this now. I actually have doors for it. They're just taken off because it's, it's like 90 degrees out here today. It's just horrible. The doors, let's talk about those. You go to the dealer, you want doors, you want soft Jeep doors, they're like $800. You want hard sided doors, they're like $2,000. This thing cost me $7,000 new. I'm not gonna pay $2,000 for doors. So I had literally been looking for years trying to find doors. I finally found a set of Seismic brand soft doors on Facebook. I literally thought I was a scam, thought I was gonna lose my kidneys. Um, the guy said $200, like new. I called the guy right away, I said, I've got the cash, I'll be there right after work, but I have to work. And this is, you know, during COVID when nobody's working. And I'm like, I'm at work, I can't leave early. I'm like, I will be there. You know, call my wife and said, hey, here's the address I'm going to in case I disappear, my kidneys are gone. You know, cause I'm like $200, how could that even be, you know? So I get there, it's some obscure town, almost an hour west of where I work. And I work an hour from home. So it's just a long drive. I get there. It's an old little town, probably a couple hundred people. There's a player stealer. I pull in there, guy greets me, an older guy. I start talking to him, thanked him again for holding him. And then he was like, yeah, I sold my dealer to, my dealership to Polaris. They're buying me out, I had to get rid of everything. So you can find good deals if, you know, it's one of those things, uh, this is technically a tool, toy tool-ish, but it's uh, my philosophy, yours may differ, but it's for me, cash for toys. You want to play, you got to save up and then pay. So I got my doors and then the windshield. Windshields, 300 to a thousand, I mean over a thousand dollars. On eBay, uh, I think I got super UTV products. They had a scratch 
scratched windshield. They had a minor scratch in it. I got the windshield for $99. Greatest thing ever. I've had it. That was like one of the first things I bought. The top on there, it's actually, uh, what is it called? Uh, oh boy. I'll get back to the top. But then the rear windshield, the rear windshield I actually bought from Polaris. The ProFit, their, their system of mounting is just so much better. I just bit the bullet and bought, and I had like a coupon or something for like 50 bucks. So I think the windshield was like 250, I think I paid 200. The rear windshield is like the most expensive accessory I bought. And then I bought that rear looking roll bar thingy. It's like a $300, $400 thing from Polaris. If you go to Polaris.com and go to their, their stuff for sale, they actually sell, you know, the repair, you know, spare parts, you know, roofs, all the $2,000 doors. If you go there and go to the clearance section, just periodically check. That rear roll bar thing was like $300 and it was on clearance for like $80. Uh, I know a lot of welders, I know a lot of fabricators. I showed it to them, I go, can you make something like this cheaper than $80? And they all laughed and said, no, no, I would buy that. So I bought that. And then the grating on the back was kind of gapped, like about this big. And before I put my rear windshield, I was throwing firewood in the back and one went right through the grates into the cab. So when I went to the dump, somebody was throwing away one of those dog gates for the back of a car. I took that and took off the grating and it fit perfect in there and I zip tied it on there. Perfect. Uh, those little sidebars too, they were also Polaris. They're like $100 and they're on clearance for like $30 or something ridiculous. I just bought them. They're kind of uh, nice because you can tie straps to them. You can put, you know, bungees, uh, all sorts of things. They, they get all beat up, but they, they give you a little bit extra height to a couple inches. So it's worthwhile on there. So. Okay, not sure how great you can see on here though because the sun's a little, it, it's like literally 90 degrees. That I'm, the reason I'm doing this video today is because it's too hot to do anything on the homestead. Like literally, it's like, it feels like 100 degrees. Like I'm just sweating here, it's sticking, you know. But uh, you can see the front, I didn't do much. I have that windshield that I bought that's been great. I have the, uh, oh, EMP, like the nuclear thing that's gonna, EMP products with the roof. Cheapest roof I could find, it was like, a little over $200 shipped. It's hard plastic. I bought a Kawasaki Mule fabric camouflage roof cover that kind of fit. And I've I used it for like three or four years. I mean, or however many years I've had this thing, like maybe three years now. Top worked great. I just got sick, uh, you know, our barn cats would sleep in it, scratch the top, go through trees and stuff. I was always afraid I was gonna rip it. It's starting to get holes in it. So I was like, I wanted a plastic top. Uh, winch. I got a winch from Harbor Freight. They're a little 2500 ATV winch. It was, uh, it was kind of funny, the winch cost like 30 or $40 on their tent sale, but that the mounting plate and all that other stuff was like the same price, 30 or 40 bucks for the mounting plate because it was a smaller winch so it did, nothing fit perfect. So, and then I ended up, I don't know if you can see in there, probably not, I'll, I'll do some close-ups later of it though, but that winch had a steel cable, I was pulling something, a stuck tractor or something, lawn tractor, something got caught in the, was stuck on the, the steel cable and it went into the winch itself, got bound into there. There was a thin metal guard on the back of the winch. It hit that, bent that, that got twisted into the, the winch. And that winch literally has like an inch clearance to the radiator. And it didn't damage, but it scratched the heck out of the radiator. So I've been trying to comb out those little fins on the radiator. Uh, that cable got frayed. So I ended up yanking it out. I went on eBay and Amazon, did some searching. I found a synthetic line. It was cheap, it was like 20 bucks. Uh, and then I got a new uh, opening, the fair lead or whatever. And you can't use the rollers with the synthetic line, they say not to. So I got the smooth anodized aluminum one. It was cheap, replace that. I do use the winch. I've got recovery gear in there. I've got a lot of land and a lot of it, there's some creeks and some swampy areas and just, you know, if it rains a lot or something. And Little tractors, lawn tractors, uh, the Kubota, whatever gets stuck. Sometimes you gotta, you, you know, you wanna use the winch to pull something out. I have yet to get stuck. Uh, nothing that four wheel drive and a lot of gas throttle can get you out of with this, uh, even with the trailer. So that's uh, one of the things. Okay, hopefully you can see me. Um, some of the things I added in the interior. I got this quad gear 
accessories, uh, Realtree camo seat cover. Uh, it literally, if you search on eBay, there's some closeout sellers. I got it for like 25 bucks. It's like a hundred dollars seat cover. Totally worth it. Cause I mean, if you got, you can see how dirty it is. But I mean, if you got like barn cats, whatever, it's really heavy fabric. I mean, well worth it. Cause I mean, it, you know, you do got uh, storage and stuff underneath here. So totally worth it. I did add a rear view mirror. Um, just got other things in here. I've got a tractor supply company, like $4 toolkit that I got in clearance. Uh, I always keep, I've got a little 12 volt heater for when, it's one of those little defrosters they sell at AutoZone, they're like $12. I use it in the winter with the cab, the doors on. I've got some Realtree floor mats. They're the back seat floor mats for a pickup truck. Uh, Polaris wants like $100 for their floor mats. Like I said, you could spend $30,000 on these things if you want. Those things were on the, the bargain rack at Tractor Supply Company, and I think I paid like, you know, $5, $10 for them, and they, and they fit fine. They're, they're just real cheap, rectangular shaped. They fit down there, you know, well worth it. I do got a, a rooftop strobe. I just added that. Uh, we do have some road frontage, and our road, it gets not a lot of traffic um, when I'm down there, but uh, on occasion, they had another main road shut down for construction, and pe our speed limit's like 35 on the road. It's like curvy, country, you know, there's no shoulders, it just drops off onto our property. So sometimes I need to trim some weeds and stuff down by the road. I'll take this down there. I usually park it right on the edge on the shoulder with the lights flashing and I got clipped by a guy with a trailer because he was doing like 90 miles an hour down the road so I talked to my neighbor down the road he said you know straddle the road a little bit and get a better strobe and people slow down so I, I put this big strobe on here when I park up there and people slow down to the speed limit now which is which is nice and I haven't been hit by a car so it's well worth it um, yeah this particular Polaris, you do get a glove box, which is really nice. I keep tools and just spare junk in there. I did add some buttons, because um, I've got one for the winch. I've got another one for, I'm gonna add a rooftop light, uh, LED light bar. The one I bought is too big. Uh, I don't need one that big. Here's an indentation for it for 20 inches. The one I bought is 21.25, so, and it's just slightly too big, so, yeah. I'm gonna add a gun rack up here, working on building that, or some kind of a scabbard there. I did add the uh, delete for the seatbelt, so it, it will run. There's like a plug you put in there. I literally have never taken this thing out of low gear. I putz around, and I hate it having to put the seatbelt on all the time. I don't cruise around at 50, 60 miles an hour like this thing will do. Literally 10 miles at the most, and I putz around. And it was just me personally, you know, if you're going to use it for other reasons, I would not do that, but you can buy them on the internet, Amazon, eBay. It's just a relay so you don't have to plug the seatbelt in or leave it plugged in. It was just, and I took off the factory nets that they come with. Those are pretty useless too. I mean, for my intended work usage. Okay, I'm not sure how good you can see me though, but I do have a farm tractor. This can slot into here, just like that. When I you need to go on the road or do anything like that, I take it off though because it does rattle. Here's that dog kennel. It's like some brand kennel air. It's just zip tied on here though. But now I can literally throw um, when I load uh, firewood and stuff like that. It's just it's just nice. It does not hit the window at all. Like nothing hits the window. Uh, here's the strobe bracket I made. I found this. It's a mount for a one inch railing for a boat. It's for like a life preserver. I got it free at a garage sale or something. You know, I had a bend in or something. The guy was like, oh, you can just have it. Took that, mounted a mounting plate on it because the strobe that I have, believe it or not, has a magnet mount and the magnet mount is super strong, but you need a nice flat area. Uh, it's with, I think it's made to withstand, it's for like paramedics and stuff like that. It's on Amazon, it's like $29. I'll put a link to it. It, uh, the magnets are super strong, but you need a smooth surface and nothing on here, even the roof, there was not enough area to do like th th there's not enough metal underneath to support it so you know i had to make my own bracket but i mean this thing it'll move the roof before that thing will come off and it's pretty nice but it is removable so like if i know i'm going to go through some woods and have trees and stuff hit this thing it's totally removable but still rock solid like i could zip around you know like i said so 
Um, these are those side railings I was talking about. They're all held in. Polaris has got these little tubes at these little levers. They just compress a big rubber washer with some bolts. When you latch them down, they flatten and they get wide and that's what holds this thing on there. But I mean, this stuff's pretty solid. And this bar, I mean, it's, it's not like, it looks like a roll bar, but it's not. I mean, obviously because it's lower than the roof, but it's a good, it protects the rear windshield, which is the main thing I wanted for firewood. And then you can hang stuff on it too. You know, you could put gun cases, uh, tools, whatever, when you, you know, it's just, uh, but the main thing was protecting that rear windshield, so. Okay, now you got the tailgate, you know, tailgating's good for tailgating, uh, for one thing, but uh, very well made. Uh, this one has a plastic box. It's almost like bed liner. I mean, you, you don't really scratch it up. Um, got some junk in here now, but uh, camera case, you know, obviously I'm filming, so I got camera gear in here. It's normally not in here. Like I said, my triangles in here, my loppers, you're always going down trails. Had some gun rack things that I was hanging on the back. I can mount on there with some zip ties if I need them. Throw a couple guns on there. Uh, T-post pounder, always going around, doing maintenance on the fence line. Uh, and then this one's kind of neat. I hope you can see it. It's a 40 millimeter grenade, uh, Mark 19 grenade, like belted grenade uh, ammo can. It fits perfect underneath this metal bracket, onto the side. Slides in there, I was gonna put twins on there, but I really don't need it. Inside of it, I keep, uh, what do they call Recovery pulleys, uh, extra toe straps, bungee cords, extra tools, a roll of duct tape, you know, all my little things. Cause you know, you leave it in the barn, the cat will get into it. You leave it outside, the mice will get in. So this, it's totally mouse proof. And it's uh, very, it just fits there. Like it's almost like it's meant to be there. I do take it out sometimes when I want to carry a lot of firewood cause it does kind of get in the way. Um, I don't know if you can see my rooftop thing. It, I gotta visually do some changes on it though, but it could be better. But, you know, like I said, Polaris's doors, they're pretty good if you latch them right. I mean, it's pretty solid for a, a plastic thing. If you can see down there, I've got a trailer hitch. It does have a receiver hitch on there. I've, I've got a regular ball. I've also got just the hole on there so I can put like little garden trailers and stuff like that. I've got some extra ones, I've got like a hook. I've got a, uh, yeah, a couple of different ones. Hook, different different things. Uh, that's the most useful though. It's got a ball so I can move my utility trailer. It's got a regular hole past that so like the little garden carts and stuff, I can just hook it right up on there. I do have a, it's in the cab. It's one of those things that cinches on the hitch because it, it does vibrate sometimes when you're driving around and sometimes it gets annoying. So sometimes I, I put that on there. But uh, other than that, I mean, not a lot of modifications because I mean, it's almost, you know, it's, it's, it's like the, the bro trucks, you know? It's it's not a bro UTV, I'm not, it, everything on here, uh, I bought it for a reason, uh, cause it's literally work only. Uh, I had a four wheeler, a little Polaris trail bus. I got rid of it cause it was, you know, I had the, the racks low, I just, it just completely loaded down all the time with trailer. This is way more useful than my UTV or ATV. I will say the ATV, a little bit more fun to ride. I mean, this thing is just like your, just like a little golf cart, you know, you're just to tootling around on the property. Uh, the four wheeler, you know, you sat on it like a motorcycle and it was, it was, it was pretty fun. So, um, yeah. Okay, just a quick show you, obviously mine's pretty messy. There's my tools down there, the heater, the parts for the hitch. Uh, like I said, I've got the glove box full of more junk. And then you've got a little cubby right here. You can put a, I think the Polaris sells like a, a, uh, whatchamacallit, a radio that actually fits in there with like GPS and stuff like that. I mean, like I said, if you want to spend 30 grand on these things, you can. Um, you've got the, I added this switch right there for the winch. This one I added too. It's a little rocker switch for a light. I didn't add the light yet. It's going to be on the front. Um, you can see the, the dash. You got a really nice display with the speedometer that goes to 120. Even though, like I said, mine never goes past, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, like 10 or 15. Um, you do get a lot of dust in the cab even. Um, I mean, my property, it just depends on the property, but it's pretty dusty. Like I said, you got really nice seat. This is a two seater. We've, you know, as long as you're not, you know, ginormous size people, um, you know, I'm an average size person, maybe 
20, 30 years ago. So, but uh, my wife and I fit in there fine. We could fit a third person in the middle whenever we're, we're going out in there. You can see the pro fit. That's these, these levers, they just twist off. And that's how you top, pop that window out. My uh, Super ATV products one, just Velcro that goes through the windshield right there. And then here's my door mounts. I mean, I'll post a link to them, but they're just these fabric Jeep doors. They're $800 new. Like I said, I got mine for 200. Um, I will say this, um, very impressed with them for 200. For 800 to 600, I would have not been impressed at all. They're, you gotta bend them to fit. I mean, you know, kind of like the Polaris. I mean, there's weld BBs everywhere. You know, the welding's kind of crappy. It, it is what it is, you know. So, not gonna complain about that. Uh, the, I've still got factory tires, no issues with that. Um, fuel economy on this for what I do and just doing general work. Um, I fill it up every couple months. I mean, I don't go zipping around like crazy, but uh, the hood, you got these little rubber latches. There you go, nice shot of the hood. They do give you this from the factory, so if you wanna install some additional, like the winch and stuff like that, like I've got, uh, it even says a little thing, two winch, so I know what it is. Um, there's my relay and stuff for the winch. There's the four wheel drive stuff down there, the radiator. Um, You can see a little bit of the damage under there from the old cable, but there's the new winch on there. So, okay, hopefully you can hear me. Um, whew, it's hot out today though, but uh, pros and cons of the UTV for the homestead. Uh, pros, it's a force multiplier, kind of like, uh, you know, for uh, SHTF and whatever, like suppressors on firearms, it's, it's a force multiplier. I mean, my wife and I can only carry so much with a wheelbarrow. This thing, I mean, it, it's phenomenal what we do with it. Firewood, bricks. My wife just was putting a water barrel in here with water to water some new trees that were kind of kind of far away. Um, I would say there's more pros than cons. The only cons, uh, two I can think of, and that is uh, one more machine to maintain, which, you know, like I said, it's but it, you got to maintain them. I mean, I I buy the kit. I I bought this new, so right now I buy the from a Polaris dealer. I, I buy the Polaris kit. It comes with the filter, comes with all the, everything you need for the tune-up and the oil change, and it's like thirty bucks or something like that. It's not bad. I can do it myself. I've got a lift for this thing. I, I lift it up, change the oil, totally there. Uh, the other negative, the cost of these things. I mean, I looked at this. And the sticker price of a new one of these is almost 3000 more than what I paid a couple years ago for these right now. So um, the price on these is, is horrible. But the good thing is there's lots of new contenders. Um, wife and I went to the tractor supply store. They had a Coleman, I think, brand. And it was like 8000 which is still high. But it had doors, roof, windshields, winch, like everything. And it was the same thing. It was a 500 uh, CC engine. It looked very well made, you know, full suspension, four wheel drive. So, I mean, there's other contenders, you know, you got Kawasaki Mules, Can-Am, uh, Yamaha, my friend's got Yamaha, uh, I think he has like a Wolverine or something. It's more, more for fun, but he, he does work with it too. Uh, the, you got the, you know, my dad's got a John Deere Gator for the last 15 years, you know, and back when he bought it, it was like $4,000, which was like really expensive 15 years ago. So, um, yeah, Kubota. I was going to get a Kubota diesel, but it's a little bit bigger than what I wanted. And I was going to get their smaller gas-powered one, but this ended up being a better price. Uh, yeah, there's that's really the big negatives. You know, maintenance and uh, uh, and for some people it's going to be the desire to add accessories to these things, which I've seen people just, just throw money on these things. I mean, you know, $400 for a screen that goes across the front so bugs don't hit you. I mean, literally go to the fabric store, buy some screen, some zip ties, and you know, $10, you're done, you know? The same thing with the windshield. I was a little lazy. Uh, I tend, unfortunately, free time I lack, 
So the windshield I paid $100 for, you could probably go to the acrylic store or whatever, plexiglass, buy some plexiglass, spend about $75, cut some <laughs> slots in it, buy some Velcro, probably spend about $100, where I, I got the, the scratch and dent one for with the gasket and everything for about $100. Um, I was going to pay the money for the glass windshield, but I've seen so many bad things on the internet with cracks, delamination, all sorts of, I, I'm just holding off. I'm hoping that the prices drop in the future and, um, oh yeah, two other features that I forgot to mention, drink holders, always used. I uh, wish I had one right now. Um, yeah, and that's all I've got to say on this. So hopefully I'm, this is the help on your research for a UTV. Like I said, you go to the internet, everybody's going to say, buy Polaris, don't buy Polaris, buy Can-Am, don't buy, you know, it's like, you go to the internet, you're going to hear a hundred different, different things. Wife and I, we went to the dealers, looked at them. I kind of determined they're all about the same for what I wanted. They all had a dump box. They're all about the same size. Price-wise, they're all about the same. So it more or less came down to well, what can I get the best deal on out the door. And then, like I said, I've had mine for quite a few years now. I don't beat it. I don't, you know, it's got the, the four-wheel drive. It's push button. It's a magnetic selector. It does some, so I did what the guy told me. Every time I'm going to change from, it's got one-wheel drive for the, the lawn so you don't chew up the ground, two-wheel drive and then four-wheel drive. And he said, whenever you're gonna shift gears, they say you can do it at slow speed. He recommended coming to a complete stop. So I do that. When I, obviously when I shift from forward to reverse, I come to a complete stop. Um, so yeah, if you take care of it, it'll, because if you go to the player, I joined uh, like the Kubota, I joined the tractor group on Facebook. The f this, I joined a Facebook group and it seemed like when I first joined, everybody was blowing up their differentials. But then you started to notice that everybody's putting ginormous tires, lifting them up. When you watch their videos, they're just like trashing these things. So I'm like, okay. And then you see these guys that use them for work and they don't have any problems. So uh, it does have a belt. That is the one um, thing you should have spare, a belt. I haven't burned through the belt yet, but it is the one item that can and will wear eventually. So it, it, it is belt driven. There's a... So it's, it's a, almost like a CVT transmission, like on a car, belt driven, like, or like a snowmobile. So that's one thing. Um, yeah, well, like I said, once again, hopefully this helped in uh, the difficult choice of trying to figure out uh, what UTV to get. And uh, now there's coming out electric ones. Uh, I would have almost gotten an electric one for the amount of, that I use mine. It sits a lot because I'm loading it and doing work and, and then I use it just to, you know, the electric ones are appealing. Um, when we bought this one, they were available, but they were still the bad, you know, kind of, they're quite a bit better now in the short amount of time. Kind of like the same thing, like when I bought this UTV, there was like, I would see one Tesla on the road. Now I go to work, I see tons of Teslas and Priuses and stuff like that. So now it's, they're getting there. Um, yeah. So once again, hopefully this is helpful and, uh, and thanks and hope you enjoyed.